Hi dear friends, good morning one and all, myself Bhavsev Sonone, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, Gokhale Education Societies, Arts, Commerce and Science College, Jawar, District Parlor. Dear friends, in the previous part of the video, we have discussed about the measurement of radioactivity with the help of various or the different types of counters particularly in the previous part of the video we discussed about the scintillation counter earlier that we have we have also discussed about the gm counter these are the two counters particularly used for the identification and the measurement of radioactivity means what type of the radiations of the particles are emitted by a radioactive element that can be identified and measured with the help of gm counter and the scintillation counter in the previous part of the video, we have discussed about the principle of working of scintillation counter. We have also discussed about the experimental setup of scintillation counter. And at the last, we have discussed working with its some advantages as compared to GM counter. Dear friends, today in this lecture, we are going to talk about a various uses or applications of radioisotopes whenever these are used in different types of the fields particularly. So in this part of the lecture, we are going to talk about uh, applications of radioisotopes whenever these are used as the tracers. Actually these radioisotopes can be used in various field of, in, in the various field. The one of the important field is the chemical reaction. Actually, this radioisotopes can be used in the study of mechanism of chemical reaction. Mechanism is the path or the pathway by which a reactor molecule gets converted into product. So definitely this reaction mechanism involving various types of intermediates. So which pathway, which mechanism is followed by means of any chemical reaction that can be predicted and that can be studied with the help of these radioisotopes whenever used as the tracers. So first chemical reaction that take place in plants and which is responsible for the formation of carbohydrate by means of plant that reaction we are going to discuss and this reaction is called as the photosynthesis. This very simple reaction actually each and everyone is well known about this photosynthesis. What happens in the photosynthesis simple uh, conversion that carbon dioxide and H2 means the water get combined with one another in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll pigment which acts as the photosensitizer and the product of this reaction is called as the carbohydrate so this is the formation of carbohydrate from carbon dioxide and the water in presence of sunlight and the chlorophyll pigment which acts as the sensitizer or the photosensitizer sensitizer in plant and this is the process by which the carbohydrates are formed and this photosynthesis is possible only in plants why this is so because this chlorophyll pigment is present only in plant and it is not present in the animals that's why this photosynthesis is possible only in plants but whenever we are going to talk about the photosynthesis definitely there are the two precursors of the reactant that we call it as the carbon dioxide and another one is the H2 molecule. So mechanism of this conversion, mechanism of this photosynthesis can be studied with the help of this radioisotopes. So whenever the radioisotopes are used for the study of mechanism of photosynthesis and for that purpose we are going to use the radioisotopes, two radioisotopes. What is the radioisotopes? These are the elements. These are the elements which are having the same atomic number but different mass number. For example, suppose I will talk about the carbon, then the atomic number of carbon is 6. But whenever you will consider the its radioisotope, then normal carbon is carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14, these are the radioisotopes. Whenever I am saying the carbon 12, carbon 13 and carbon 14, so these 12, 13 and 14, these are the mass numbers. These are the mass numbers. So these are the radioisotopes of carbon 6. Similarly, oxygen. Oxygen is the having atomic number 8. So definitely the normal mass of this 
mass number of normal oxygen is oxygen 16 and that's why oxygen 18 is the mass is the radioisotope of oxygen 8 so this is simple case that i hope we will be able to so radioisotopes these are the uh, elements which are having the same uh, these are the atoms of the elements which are having the same atomic number but different mass number and that's why carbon 14 is the radioisotope of carbon 12 and oxygen 18 is the radioisotope of oxygen 16 so here these two radioisotopes are used in order to study the mechanism of photosynthesis which take place in plants particularly so here this is the simple reaction whenever we are going to talk about the photosynthesis the formation of carbohydrate is take place like this so here carbon dioxide six molecules of carbon dioxide combined with six molecules of H2O and there is a formation of this carbohydrate this carbohydrate definitely actually the main part here is that or the our part of interest is that the water oxygen which is liberated in the process of photosynthesis whether this oxygen come from H2 molecule or the carbon dioxide this is the part of our interest because this carbon dioxide also containing oxygen and H2 molecule also containing oxygen so this liberated oxygen whether it comes from whether it comes from H2 molecule or the CO2 molecule so for that purpose uh, it's very simple that I am going to replace both the oxygen one after another or oxygen of both the molecules one after one after another by means of its radioisotopes. So in the first part what I am going to do, I am going to replace the oxygen of H2 molecule by means of its radioisotope oxygen 18. So here in this case what is observed here, whenever I will replace the oxygen of H2 molecule by radioisotope oxygen 18, then liberated oxygen was associated with the radioisotope here i hope you will get the idea so it means that whenever i will replace the oxygen of h2 molecule by its means of its radioisotope now it will become the part of liberated, liberated oxygen so this is the one uh, possibility that i tried to check here in the second part I, what i have done now I will not replace the H2 molecule. I will replace, I will not label the H2 molecule. Now I am going to label the oxygen of carbon dioxide by means of its radioisotope. Or I will replace the oxygen of carbon dioxide by means of radioisotope oxygen 16. So whenever I will label the oxygen of carbon dioxide by means of radioisotope, now it will become the part of or it is associated with what? it is associated with the carbohydrate i hope uh, uh, from this two trial uh, from this two uh, possibility or uh, from this two observation i hope you will be able to make the conclusion so it means that whenever i will replace the oxygen of h2 now it become the part of liberated oxygen and whenever i will replace the oxygen of uh, i will label the oxygen of carbon dioxide now it will become the part of what it will become the part of carbohydrate what does it means it means that whenever i am going to replace the oxygen of carbon dioxide at that time liberated oxygen is not containing radioisotope it means that this oxygen come from h2 molecule or here you can see the in the in the first possibility so whenever i will replace the oxygen of h2 by means of its radioisotope now it is associated with the it is associated with the liberated oxygen so this is the uh, conclusion so here both this both this observation indicates that the water oxygen released in the process of photosynthesis it is not coming from it is not coming from carbon dioxide but actually it comes from water molecule so liberated oxygen in the process of photosynthesis comes from H2 molecule and not the CO2 molecule this is very simple so we are by means of this radioisotopes of the oxygen we are able to predict the water oxygen or liberated oxygen whether it comes from H2 or the carbon dioxide then we got the conclusion here liberated oxygen in the process of photosynthesis comes from water molecule means H2 molecule and not from the carbon dioxide molecule so in the next applications or the in the next discussion we will have the next reaction that is the hydrolysis of ester again this is important or this is one of the 
another example by which we will use the radioisotopes for the study of reaction mechanism. This is a very simple reaction, hydrolysis of ester. So whenever the esters are subjected for the hydrolysis in presence of acid or in presence of base, definitely there are two products. One is the acid, another one is the alcohol. So this is the ester molecule. This is the general representation of the ester molecule RC double bond O, O, R prime. Whenever it is subjected for the hydrolysis in presence, means in presence of H2, then one is the product acid, another one is the alcohol. So again, whenever the system molecule get converted into product acid and the alcohol, which path, which pathway, which mechanism is followed by this system molecule through various intermediates, this is the purpose of our study. So whether actually there are two possibilities, either carbonyl, carbon and oxygen, this bond will be broken, or it may be that a bond between this oxygen and R prime group may be broken. So which bond actually broken during the hydrolysis of ester in presence of H plus and OH minus? Then this is the part of our study. So that we will consider here with the two possibility. In the possibility first, in the first possibility, what happens? This is the first possibility in which what happens? Whenever in the first possibility I am going to replace, I am going to label the oxygen of H2 molecule. Whenever I will replace or I will label the oxygen of H2 molecule by means of its radioisotope, so this is the acid, then it is associated with acid molecule. It means that whenever I will label the oxygen of H2 molecule by means of its radioisotope, and if it is associated with the acid, it means that it follows the path first. It's very simple. It means that what does it mean? It means that this oxygen will attack here, this oxygen will attack here, this bond will broken down and it will again form and it will be uh, this OR will be the living group and OR with this hydrogen will become R prime oil. This is the pathway actually if it is associated with or if this radioisotope of H2O is associated with acid molecule, it means that it follows the path first. But suppose it is not associated with the acid molecule like this, so I hope you will be able to uh, this, uh, let me add this first please, okay, yeah, here in the second case, but if this radioisotope O18, oxygen 18, of H2 molecule is not associated with the acid and it is associated with the alcohol molecule, it means that, what does it, do? it mean that? It follows the path second. It follows the path second and this is the uh, purpose of our study and how in this case how the radioisotopes are used to identify whether the reaction follows path first or the reaction follows path second. Then after this possibility whenever the products are analyzed whenever the products are analyzed then it was found that it was found that the radioisotopes of H2 molecule or the radioisotope oxygen of H2 molecule it was associated with it was associated with what it was associated with the acid and it was not associated with alcohol molecule if this is the case here you can see here so by using radioisotope oxygen 18 Whenever it is labeled in H2 molecule, it was observed that it was associated with the acid molecule. It was associated with the acid molecule and it was not associated with the alcohol molecule during the formation of product in this reaction. Hence we can say that, hence we can say that this reaction mechanism of hydrolysis follows path first and not the path second because labeled oxygen of H2 molecule it was associated with acid and not associated with alcohol and it was possible in the path first you can see here here this oxygen 18 of H2 molecule is associated with the acid and in the path second it was associated with the alcohol so but whenever the products are analyzed then it was found that the radioisotope of H2 molecule it was associated with the acid and not associated with the alcohol and this is possible in the path first and not path second. So whenever ester molecule undergoes hydrolysis, 
it always follows path first and not the path second so i hope you got the idea about which pathway or the mechanism is followed by means of piston molecule during its hydrolysis into the formation of or to form the pro uh, products like alcohol and the acid molecule so next next application of this radioisotopes whenever these are used as a tracers again in the another chemical reaction called as friedel craft reaction i think it's again very familiar reaction to you all so friedel craft reaction actually these are the names of scientists who has given this reaction but here in the friedel craft reaction actually this is the friedel craft alkylation reaction either in the alkylation reaction or the acylation reaction but here we are going to talk about the alkylation reaction what happens in this reaction actually it is the part of interest to discuss the water hcl gas is formed here this hcl is contain the chlorine okay actually the friedel craft alkylation reaction is very simple that aromatic hydrocarbon reacts with alkyl chloride in presence of lewis acid like aluminum trichloride and it gives the formation of al that is aromatic hydrocarbon having alkyl group so this is very simple at the same time there is a formation of an hcl here this alcl3 is used as a catalyst so definitely at the start of reaction and at the end of reaction it will remains unchanged so this is the uh, simple friedel craft reaction but our part of interest is that so whenever the chlorine hcl gas is liberated here it is contain the chlorine so whether this chlorine comes from catalyst alcl3 or it comes from co3cl this very simple so definitely both the molecules either catalyst or alkyl chloride both are containing the chlorine so whether this chlorine comes from catalyst alcl3 or it comes from co3cl this is the part of our interest and that can be confirmed with the help of radioisotopes whenever these are used as a tracer so this is the part of our interest so aluminum chloride whenever used as a catalyst for the reaction between aromatic hydrocarbon and alkyl chloride in presence of an this catalyst then it gives the product but here labeled chlorine in hcl labeled chlorine this is the labeled chlorine this star indicates this is the radioisotope of normal chlorine and this is the radioisotope of chlorine so this labeled chlorine in hcl gas must have come from catalyst it must have come from catalyst alcl3 and it is not or uh, it come, it does not come from the alkyl chloride or the alkyl other uh, uh, yeah, alkyl chloride co3cl then if this is the case if it comes from the alcl3 then definitely what type of the reaction mechanism is followed by means of friedel craft reaction here if it is confirmed that hcl so for that purpose what we have done here for that purpose we have labeled chlorine of alcl3 we have labeled chlorine of alcl3 so for that purpose what we have done actually we have labeled chlorine in catalyst so whenever this chlorine in catalyst is labeled by means of radioisotope then we found that it is associated with the hcl molecule if it is not associated with the hcl molecule then then we should predict that it is it is coming from or it is the it is coming from the alkyl chloride so this labeled chlorine hcl gas must have come from catalyst alcl3 because this is whenever this labeled whenever this chlorine of catalyst is labeled by means of its radioisotope then and then the chlorine in hcl gas is labeled otherwise it is not found to be labeled one and that indicates that the chlorine in hcl gas come from alcl3 catalyst and it is not from co3cl and if this is the case then definitely what type of the mechanism is followed by this reaction then there is only one possibility that this indicates that this alcl3 this alcl3 which acts as the catalyst in this reaction takes an active part in the reaction to form some intermediate complex and this complex later on undergoes decompose to form our product 
and this can be represented as so this is the aromatic hydrocarbon which reacts with the alkyl chloride and this AlCl3 acts as the catalyst so it will take active part in the reaction initially it will form some intermediate it will form some intermediate so this is nothing but the intermediate C6S6S3 it will form bond with the HAlCl4 later on what happens this uh, this uh, intermediate will decompose and it gives the formation of that is alkyl aromatic compound and that is uh, you know this is CCS6 so this is nothing but the uh, methyl benzene so this methyl benzene that we call it toline but here this SCL which is contained the chlorine this labeled chlorine now it indicates that it is a part of ALCL3 so I hope you will be able to uh, consider here definitely it is this at the end of reaction again this ALCL3 will remains unchanged because it is the catalyst so at the end of reaction it will again recover over here so this that's why here you can say that there is just exchange between uh, there is just exchange of chlorine between ALCL3 and CS3Cl because here you can see that one of the chlorine atom of ALCL3 now it is the part of SCL molecule SCL gas and at the start at the end of reaction again ALCL3 is formed here and this out of this 3 chlorine chlorine now uh, it, to, it is coming from the alkyl chloride so this is the again reaction by which we will be able to predict the correct mechanism of friedel craft reaction and the conclusion is that here in this case the chlorine of SCL gas is a part of or it is coming from ALCL3 and not from alkyl chloride so this is the simple case so this alcl3 is associated with the uh, radioisotope that's why uh, it indicates that this chlorine now become the part of escl of this friedel craft reaction so i hope today you got an uh, you got an idea this is one of the application that is nothing but the study of st study of reaction mechanism of various chemical reactions so today friends we have discussed about the photosynthesis we have also discussed about the ester hydrolysis either in presence of H plus or the OH minus and the last reaction that we discussed for its uh, for the study of its mechanism is friedel craft reaction so this is uh, three example by which uh, we can we have studied the applications of radioisotopes whenever these are used as a tracer for the study of reaction mechanism of uh, chemical reaction various types of the chemical reaction apart from this there are again another applications of these radioisotopes for the another purposes that we will discuss in the next lecture so here this is important thing for us to study the different applications of radioisotopes so in the next part of the video we will discuss about the remaining applications of radioisotopes whenever these are used as traces thank you So we will again resume in the next video to discuss the next application of radioisotopes that is age determination. So thank you friends. Thank you once again.